Hello, my name is Chaz Hamilsmith Ebert, and I'm the CEO of Ebert Digital and the Ebert Companies, which among other things, publish one of the preeminent movie review sites, RogerEbert.com. I also produce films and television programs, and I'm the president of the Roger and Chaz Ebert Foundation, where my goals are to provide programs to help break the glass ceiling for women and people of color, and to provide education and arts for women, children, and families. Personally, I have a global interest in fostering what I call the FEC principles. It stands for forgiveness, empathy, which was inspired by my late husband, Roger Ebert, compassion, and kindness. And the programs I endow for emerging writers, artists, filmmakers, and technologists encourage these precepts. I co-founded the Ebertfest Film Festival at the University of Illinois in Champaign, where I give a humanitarian award to films that exhibit unusual compassion. Some of the documentary films I have supported as an executive producer are primarily concerned with these principles, or that of social justice. And I recently co-sponsored the No Malice Film Contest with the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Library Foundation where we awarded prizes to 10 young filmmakers ages 11 to 21 for their films on racial healing. Personally, whether in my personal or professional life, one of my great satisfactions is in participating in programs that help mentor others, whether they're young and starting out or older and emerging, in ways that establish a path to the future to improve the human condition. I started my career as an attorney after I graduated from the DePaul College of Law in Chicago, Illinois, and over the years I practiced as an environmental attorney, and in fact I was featured in Ebony Magazine as the first African American enforcement attorney in Region 5 at the Environmental Protection Agency. I also practiced in the fields of civil rights and equal employment opportunity and with a private law firm in the litigation department. Later, I entered the entertainment industry as an executive, and I continued to occupy that space. But one of my happiest days is when I was able to achieve a fantasy I had in the third grade of becoming a philanthropist. And this materialized with the endowment of the Roger and Chaz Ebert Foundation. One of my top role models for my practice of law was Justice Thurgood Marshall, the first African-American Supreme Court Justice of the United States, whom I had the chance to meet on two occasions. On one occasion, when I was a law student, I was fortunate to be his seatmate at a luncheon, and he was so gracious in giving me advice about being studious, but also about being confident, never forgetting where I came from, and also reaching back to help others. He had a good sense of humor, and he spoke with me as if I were a peer rather than just a wide-eyed student. I will never forget his generosity. My other role model when I was a young lawyer was Jewel Stratford Le Fontant, who in 1946 was the first African-American woman to graduate from the University of Chicago Law School. She later became the first African-American female and actually the first female to be appointed Deputy Solicitor General of the United States. And interestingly, she is coincidentally the mother of a friend, John Rogers, who founded Ariel, the largest African-American investment fund in the United States. But I also want to pay tribute to my very first role model, the woman who was my primary model for these principles of compassion and kindness and generosity my mother, Mrs. Johnny May Hamill. She was quite simply a goddess to me. And when she walked into a room, she brought the sunshine with her. She was almost six feet tall in her high heels, and in her 85 years on this earth, I don't remember her saying many negative things about people or situations. She not only found the silver linings in things, but especially in things that challenged us. But her very special gift was in making you feel as if you were better than you thought you were. And from her heart, she just felt that all children were worthy of love. She and my dad provided it to all nine of us because I had eight siblings. But I think her example rang loudest 
when she opened our home to many in need, whether they were in need of a meal or of a bed for the night or just a big hug and encouragement of love. And it is to her that I owe my fierce desire to do good. One of my current role models is Oprah Winfrey, who famously rose above a troubled childhood attendant with trauma to become one of the most philanthropic people on this earth. And she's probably the most famous woman in the world. And this is because of her sincere desire to help make this world a better place. So it may not surprise you to know that my overall role model is the spirit of Mother Mary in all of her incarnations not as a religious symbol, but as a symbol of the divine feminine, bringing love and compassion to help heal the world. I am hoping that the things that I do in my personal life, in my professional life, and in my life in the world of charity and philanthropy will have even a tenth of the impact that these heroes of mine had. Thank you.